Hey chess kids, Liam Murphy here with another game analysis. Today we're looking at a game between world champion Magnus Carlsen playing with the white pieces against Rain Wilson playing with the black pieces. Of course, Rain Wilson is better known as Dwight Schrute for all of the office fans out there. So let's see how Rain fares against world chess champion Magnus Carlsen. Magnus starts with pawn to e4, and Rain plays g6. Um, certainly an offbeat opening, of course. At the start of chess games, you want to fight for the center of the board, develop your minor pieces, and get your king castled. Um, so g6, kind of a hyper-modern defense, looking to contend for the center with pieces like moves like bishop g7. Magnus develops his knight to f3, and Rain plays d6. Um, kind of going for... A little bit of a King's Indian defense setup against pawn to e4. And Magnus just grabs the center with his two center pawns. His pawns on d and e are, of course, better pawns than like the d6 pawn, which is not as far up the board. And Rain plays bishop g7, putting some pressure on the d4 pawn, which is defended twice by Magnus. Here, Magnus continues to develop his pieces. Bishop c4, a super active bishop pointed at the enemy king. And the F pawn, the F pawn is considered the king's weak point at the start of the game because only the king defends it. And the king is a terrible defender of material. And here, Rain makes a mistake with bishop g4. Now, in chess, you almost always want to develop your knights before your bishops. And that's for several reasons. One, um, the bishop is more of a flexible piece, meaning like, you know, yogis who can touch their toes, those are flexible people. Where knights, they usually have one or two happy squares. F3 is a great square for knights, and C3 for white. Or sometimes they like to go to D2 or E2, but almost never to the side of the board. Bishops, on the other hand, you like to get a little bit more information before you decide where your bishops go. Sometimes it can go on D7, it can go to E6, it can go to G4. Sometimes it gets fianchetto, it can go to A6. You don't exactly know with your bishops um, where they want to go until your opponent makes more moves. And more importantly here, this bishop is a loose piece, meaning a piece that is undefended by an enemy piece. And bishop g4, you think, would be a great move pinning the knight to the queen. However, it is a blunder. I hope you chess kids spotted the fantastic move by Magnus. And that is bishop takes f7, sacrificing the bishop for a pawn on the king's weak point. Reign Captures the bishop back, of course. And here is where Magnus's plan comes to fruition. He plays knight g5 check, where his queen discovers an attack on the loose bishop. Notice that the c1 bishop is defending the knight. So, of course, the king does not want to march up the board. So, he retreats, and then Magnus takes the bishop on g4. So, he is now up one pawn. And more importantly, the enemy king can no longer castle. It has moved. And it is in a host of danger with all of these pieces getting surrounded by the king very fast. Compared to white's king, super safe. It's going to be able to castle. And so let's see what Rain does about this. He plays knight h6. Again, um, knight h6 attacks the enemy queen. So it is developing a piece with tempo. However, knight f6 would probably be considered more of a normal move here um, because putting your knights on the edge of the board is usually not considered a great idea. There's a little rhyme where we say knights on the rim are dim. Imagine a light bulb above your head. You want that light bulb glowing, bright. You have great ideas. So if you put your knight on the edge of the board, usually not the best idea. The reason is you are restricting the squares the knight can move to when you put it on the edge of the board compared to moving it closer towards the center. Perhaps Rain just wanted to give some extra defense on f7. And he was concerned about moves like e5 if he put his knight on f6. Uh, Magnus moves his queen to h3, keeping on this diagonal and targeting these holes in the enemy position. And Rain develops a knight to d7. Another mistake. I hope you chess kids can spot this move, but by putting the knight to d7, of course, Magnus's knight loves to jump into e6, where it is both attacking the queen and another loose piece of the enemy, the bishop on g7. It's important in chess to always notice the loose pieces, the pieces that are not defended, 
by any other piece. And so by hitting the queen, the queen is going to move. And then Magnus is going to pick up the bishop on g7 with a check for good measure. Rain saves his queen and Magnus takes the knight on or the bishop on g7. And Rain must move his king to d8. Here, Magnus gives the check, just improving the knight. Um, the king's going to go back to e8 anyways. And then picks up the free knight that was previously defended by the bishop on h6. Why did he take with the bishop instead of the queen? Well, he wanted to get another piece into the game. The queen maybe comes to f3. Ideas of trying to deliver checkmate over here. But this bishop prevents, like, for example, rook f8 ever being a move. And maybe even the bishop or the knight can support the square on g7. Rain develops his knight to f6, moving his knight once but twice. And honestly, he's just down substantial material, so there's not a ton of great moves for him to do at this point. And Magnus gets his last minor piece into the game by playing knight c3. Rain's last move was to attacking the pawn on e4, and Magnus defends the pawn on e4 with development. Here, Rain plays king f7, attacking the knight once and twice. And Magnus plays pawn to d5 to defend that knight. He has this beautiful outpost square, a square that cannot be attacked by an enemy pawn. And it's now a protected outpost by putting this pawn on d5, really putting the clamps down on the position. Rain plays pawn to c6, trying to undermine the protected pass pawn. And Magnus castles, right? He is a world chess champion. There is no surprise he's making great moves, but... He has gotten all his minor pieces out into the game. He's developed his queen and he's gotten his king safe. And castling can also be an aggressive move because the rook is now lined up with the king. Maybe even ideas of f4, f5 could be a reality. Here, rain captures on d5. Magnus captures on d5. And rain plays queen c4. Perhaps rain could have maybe won a little bit of material with knight takes d5, knight takes d5 and queen takes e6. However, you don't want to trade pieces when you are losing, and that would make the enemy king uh, less safe. And to be honest, he's just down substantial material now, so there's really not a ton of great moves he can make. So queen c4 is played, and Magnus hits the king with a check. The king retreats to e8. Magnus plays queen e6. He now wants his queen on this outpost to make use of these checks. Rain plays queen g4. He's being attacked, so he wants to trade the queens. And Magnus, of course, could have traded the queens and just won an endgame. But instead, he plays queen f7. He wants more than to trade and win an endgame. He wants to go for checkmate now. Rain plays king d7. And Magnus gets his last piece into the game. The rook on a1 was not participating in the game. And on e1, it is threatening to attack the E pawn more than once, which is pinned. You cannot move this pawn because the queen is pinning it to the king. So rook e8 is played to defend the e7 pawn. And now Magnus plugs the outpost with his rook, perhaps planning to double up his rooks to put maximum pressure on the e7 pawn, attacking it more times than it can be defended. Rain plays queen d4. To be honest, he's just kind of shuffling his pieces back and forth. There's almost no moves that it can he can make that really help his position, and Magnus plays rook e1, attacking the e pawn once, twice, three times, where it is only defended once, twice, and I don't really see how they can get a third defender with a move they want to make, knight g8, not really a move you want to make um, in this position, and Rain instead plays knight g4, um, perhaps hoping that Magnus forgets and he can get some sort of check on the king. And Magnus, of course, just takes d3 versus 2 attacking defense, uh, advantage here and captures on e7. The black rook captures back and Magnus attacks with the captures back with his rook where he will now be able to have pieces invading on the seventh rank to deadly effect. The king moves to c8. Magnus trades the rooks with rook to e8 because I believe he's found a checkmate here. The rook captures back. The queen captures back. The king runs to c7. He gets another piece involved in this game with knight to e6, attacking the king, forking the queen. The king does not have a lot of moves, 
cannot go here, cannot go here, cannot go here, cannot go here. Only square is to king to b6. And what would you do here, chess kids? Would you take the queen? Well, if you're the world champion, you don't take the queen. You go for checkmate in one move with queen to b5. The knight on c3 protects the queen. The queen attacks c5, a5, a6, b6, and c6. The king cannot run to c7 due to the knight uh, attacking the c7 square. So not a surprising result, but world chess champion Magnus Carlsen defeats Rain Wilson, a.k.a. Dwight Schrute, in a fantastic chess game. If you're enjoying these videos, make sure you smash that like and subscribe button so you can learn more great chess content.